<coughs> is this a bit of an embarrassment, the Yom Kippur issue? No, I think that if you look at the comments from the um, leadership of the Jewish community that I've read, uh, they make this point about uh, every Saturday is a Sabbath day. It's true that Yom Kippur is the holiest of um, days, but clearly there is provision for um, uh, postal voting. Uh, and which is availed of by uh, many okay. in the Jewish community, the Orthodox as well. I think what it highlights is that you can never satisfy anyone with you when you nominate a particular day. OK. You agree you're starting well behind? I think that uh, we start the underdogs because I think it's been a tough couple of years in, um, in government, despite the fact that we've steered the economy through successfully. We've created... 840,000 jobs. But you would agree, you're odds on to lose, aren't you? No, I don't, I don't no. agree. No, no, no. I think this is clearly a winnable election. It's a hard election, but every election is hard. This is hard for different reasons, uh, Neil. It's hard, but it's doable. And why is an eight-month campaign good for Australia? Maybe it's a clever political strategy. Why is it good for this country? Well, it depends which way you want to look at this. Some would argue we've already had a two-year campaign, Neil, but it's been pretty... Um, um, uncompromising and not very revealing. It's been a slanging match. As for it being another eight months, I don't accept that. All that's happened is that precision has been given to what we've always said. I don't know how many times I've been on your program and said the one thing I can guarantee you is that we will last our full term. We will. And so giving definition to that, I think, helps reinforce that point. But the Prime Minister said there's been all this speculation and uncertainty. Where? Well, there has been speculation. Where? Well, Tony Abbott, for one and a half years, was saying this government's not going to run its full term. Yeah, nobody he said, said it, oh, when's the election date? I can't possibly get on with the year unless I know when the election... Uh, I think that business has been saying that. They, 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 they have said that they want some certainty around which to plan. Now, I'm, I'm not saying... That's the only certainty they want or the only direction they want because I think there are clear issues in this election as to how we take the economy forward, how we position it for the new economy and the new opportunities, how we lift productivity, how we get innovation, how we invest in skills. Yeah, I'd like to get to those issues, but this is, it's clearly a political decision to name the date. Is part of it to uh, kill off Kevin Rudd? No. Well, I, no. well, I think that happened 12 months ago, um, so he, he wasn't causing some irritation, nibbling away there? Yeah, well, I think he was nibbling away. I, I don't... Well, his supporters were. Um, I, I don't put it any higher than that. But it didn't go anywhere. It hadn't gone anywhere. Uh, no, it's, that, that's not the purpose of this. But is that the end of his supporters now? They can't really do anything now to, uh, to get him up before uh, September 14th? Well, I don't think they've been able to do it in the last 12 months, so I don't see any reason why they should be able to do it in the next Will day. they go away now? Um, that remains to be seen. I hope they do. I, I think that we're in... Let me make this point, Neil, that whenever you're attacked from within, that drags your personal ratings down. I know because I went through it. Tony Abbott's ratings have been dragged down with no internal divisions. The key question, I think, on leadership is if his fortunes continue to decline, what are the Liberals going to do in the next eight months? What, on you, see, on you, think leadership. They, you seriously think they might replace him before the election? I do. Put in Malcolm Turnbull. I don't know who they'd put in. I'm just saying I think this is an issue. The leadership issue is far more with them, given where we are now, than in our camp. Ours was resolved where there were um, rumblings, where there was dissension, where there was a clear challenge. He's got the problems, the niggling away even though there's been no challenge and he's no, had no internal divisions. Let's wait and see. But I'm more interested, I must say, in this being the opportunity in which we can clear the deck at the start of this year and get on to a policy debate. OK, well, let, let's start with one. Superannuation. Uh, you're going to have to pay for all these bills somehow, like the Gonski, the education report and the disability scheme and everything else. It's speculated in the Financial Review that you look at changing tax or introducing taxation on superannuation payments to people over 60. Is but that a chance? People have been speculating. That's terrifying. About, people have been... Yeah, I, I agree. And I think the last thing we need is uncertainty on superannuation. But let me make this point, Neil. And this is another factor that will be in this election. We have had three years of either negative or neutral returns on super. This year, the superannuation funds are doing a lot better. So people's retirement incomes will be beginning to build again. 
But understand this on super, none of those earnings would be there, none of those funds would be there for 75% of the population if it were not for a Labor government. It was a Labor government that introduced the 9%. The Liberal governments and the Coalition, when they were in office, did nothing to improve superannuation entitlement. We're committed to take it to 12, and already this is not just great benefit for individuals whose retirement incomes are building, yeah. this is a savings pool for the nation. So are you, is, it, is it correct that the government is looking at plans to change the taxation on superannuation payouts? I'm not aware of any plans to change the superannuation on uh, the t tax on superannuation. And I think what we need is certainty and confidence in the superannuation system, and it's only a Labor government that will give that. Do you agree the credibility of the Prime Minister is not strong? With the electric? Yeah, I think that it's been unfortunate that the um, circumstances around whether it's a tax, whether it's a price. But the uh, carbon tax? Well, oh, you're not still going to call it a price. Well, it is a price. Oh, okay. It is a price, okay. and it's just been she established it as a, a tax. I know she did, but it's a price, and it was <laughs> all of the advice we got, whether it was from Ross Garno, whether it was the Productivity Commission said the way you've got to start this price is to fix it. What we've moved to is the floating price now sooner. You're not seriously arguing that she did anything other than break her promise, eh? I, I, there is a very strong case that that's what happened. All I'm saying is, has it hurt the economy? Answer, no. Did it wipe Paella off the face of the earth? No. And isn't it better, Neil, if we want to change people's behaviour to improve the environment and reduce greenhouse emissions. Okay. What's the best mechanism to do it with? A market mechanism. And it's only been a Labor government that's been bold enough to embrace that market mechanism. I was reading through an interview I did with the Prime Minister on the eve of the previous, uh, just after the previous election was called, which is about the last time I spoke to her. She said then, uh, on hospitals, on health, the buck stops with me. So who carries responsibility for the massive cuts in hospitals in Victoria. If the buck stops with you, why can't you fix it? Well, this has been an ungainly debate, and all I'm saying is this is an area in which federal and states have to work together. I think anyway. I'm sick of the buck passing. I'm sure the public is. I confront it in the regional policy, Neil, but I've been able to establish an agreement with all states for a partnership approach to regional development, where we not only agree on the personnel that will run the regional development bodies, but we agree to combine our resources to respond to the initiatives they put forward. This country needs a partnership between governments, regardless of their political persuasion, because the truth is the challenge facing this country can't be solved by one government alone. And if it's left to one government alone, you'll only get the buck passing. Okay. We need a partnership, and that's what Labor would and and, and um, um, Minister Plebisek is going is, is seeking a meeting to try and get a sensible outcome rather than the blame game. Okay, well, is trust an issue here in this election? <laughs> I think trust is always an important dimension of politics. I think the public wants to be believe their politicians when they say things and they want integrity in politics. I do believe that, but this is going to be as much about, it, it, it's one thing to assert trust, you can only judge the trust in the quality of the policies. Now the Liberals have said all their policies are ready. Now that the, and we'll put them out when the election's called. Now the election date's been announced, let's see them. The, and that's the whole reason we've got this ridiculous situation, isn't it? So try and force them into a corner. Eight months no, out. Force what into a corner? Well, for, they, they, force an alternative government, policies. force an alternative government to say what its policies are, how it's going to fund if it abolishes... Yeah, fair enough. If it, goes ahead, if it goes ahead with the mining tax, how is it going to fund okay. the pension increases that that tax funds? Key issues, three key issues for you. What are they? I think skills and education. I think productivity in terms of the economy. And I think better delivery of services, recognising the diversity of this country. And my purpose in terms of the regional approach is to keep demonstrating this point that as a patchwork economy, the regions of the patches, they're all different, and we've got to reach out and try and get much more of a local input into the sensible programs that best service those regions. You're a former leader. Did the Prime Minister consult you here? 
No, but the Prime Minister, I've never known a Prime Minister in all the cabinets that I've served in, and there have been a lot of those, to have consulted me about the election date. It doesn't happen. Not even Hawkey. No, not Bob, not He, he ran a nine-week campaign. Look what it did to him. Yeah, well, I mean, people can have all of those sorts of arguments, but I say, Neil, don't look to the past, look to the future. And the future of this country, in my view, is unparalleled. We are in the best economic climate that we could hope to be in, but what we've got to distribute much better is the benefits of that strength. And we have a two-speed economy. We've got to make sure we spread those benefits so that other sections of the economy can benefit, sustain themselves and grow. That's our future. That's what I believe in, and I think we can make it. And at least Craig Thompson will be out of the Parliament in eight months, won't he? Uh, I'm not too sure whether he's proposing to, um, to stand, but he's not in the Labor Party, so we don't have uh, that issue on our hands. Wouldn't be a bad thing, would it? What? Get him out. Well, it's up to the people who gets him out. He, he was elected by the people, and they have the chance at the next elect, just as they have with me.